Well, it's a huge day for the Indian Air Force after decades of waiting and winning a lengthy court battle and all sorts of allegations. The first Rafale fighters are headed home. They took off from Merignac in France earlier today and after aerial refueling from French Air Force tankers, they've now landed at the French Air Force base of Al Dafra in the UAE. They land in their home base, Ambala, on Wednesday. What's the jet all about? Take a look. These jets, five of them, are now at the Al Dafra Air Base in the United Arab Emirates after air-to-air -air refueling. These jets will then be flown to India, Ambala, on Wednesday. That's where they're going to be based. The aircraft itself is among the most advanced in the world, clearly the most advanced of its class in Asia. It comes with the Meteor air-to-air -air missile, which outranges anything in service, in fact, anywhere in the world. In simple terms, it can hit air aerial targets such as enemy missiles or aircraft at farther ranges than any other missile. The Scalp cruise missile which can hit targets on the ground 300 kilometers away and the Mika air-to-air -air missile which is somewhat shorter range but very versatile. The aircraft brings with it a great deal of reliability. This has been a problem for the IAF in the past. They need the planes available when they want it and also carries a very significant weapons load. It is quite easily the most advanced fighter of its class in Asia. Now, this was a deal which, uh, for 36 Rafale fighters, which cost India 58,000 crores. It was a long process. It went through the courts, finally, the Indian Air Force getting the aircraft that it desperately needed. Two squadrons of these aircraft, 18 aircraft each, five aircraft on their way to India now. Well, joining us now, a very special guest, a man who commanded the Eastern Air Command, the Western Air Command. He was also the deputy chief of the IAF. He fired the bomb that hit Tiger Hill during the Kargil War. That famous video of Tiger Hill being struck. Well, he's the man who actually pulled the trigger over there. He's flown thousands of hours on the Mirage 2000, and he was instrumental in bringing the Rafale to India. Air Marshal Raghunath Nambiar, a consummate flyer, if ever there was one. Thanks very much, sir, for being with us. Now, you've also flown the Rafale. Um, in simple terms, for our viewers, what does it do better than um, another aircraft? For example, the older Mirage 2000. The Rafale is a fully integrated aircraft. All its systems are so beautifully designed and that they fit like a hand into the glove of a person. Uh, the aircraft has got multiple roles, all of which it can do in the same sortie. And therefore, if the complexity of the systems are uh, quite uh, terrific. But the, problem, the, the best thing about this aircraft is all of them is so beautifully integrated that a pilot can operate all these uh, controls and switches and achieve victory. That's uh, something which is very unique to the Rafale and is much unlike all the aircraft that we have in our inventory today. Let me give you a simple example. On the stick and throttle of the Rafale, there are as many as 34 switches, all of which require to be operated to make that aircraft fly better. Some of the more important switches are quite clunky and easy to distinguish from, but the others are tiny and require a lot of presence of mind to operate at the correct point and the correct time. There are 74 different functions that you can realize with your stick and throttle alone. Now to master them, it takes a lot of expertise, a lot of training and a lot of dedication. We have sent our best pilots to France to fly the best aircraft in the world in the sky at this point in time. And I'm, I so envy all these young men who come back, who are on their way back to India. I'm sure they will be a great addition to the Indian Air Force and it will make us touch the sky with glory again. That's because, uh, Air Marshal, you can't stop thinking about flying. That's what you've done for so many decades. It's, it's, it's very much in your blood. I'm sure you would have loved to have been there, to have been one of those young pilots bringing those planes back. But, sir, about the Rafale, um, the fact that it hits targets at a longer range with its missiles, the, the Meteor missile, and also on the ground with the Scalp missile, uh, what does that mean from an operational standpoint? Uh, when you get into an air combat, and let me put it as a simple and uh, sort of a comparison. It's like you going into a fight with a spear against somebody who's got a dagger. Obviously, the one with the spear has got a further big... Okay. All right, we'll just fix that. We'll come back to that line. But the images that you see on your screen over there are of the first Rafals actually taking off from Merignac 
that's the Dassault facility in France, uh, on their way to India. These jets have now landed at the Al Dafra base in the United Arab Emirates. Let's go back to uh, Air Marshal uh, Nambia. We lost you there for a second, sir. You were telling me about the scalp and the meteor. Go ahead. The, the scalp and the meteor give the Rafale a ma major advantage in the Indian skies today. The sensors of the Rafale, that includes its, red, its radar and its fun front sector optronics, including an India-specific enhancement of a thermal imaging camera right in front, enhances the capability of this aircraft in a tremendous manner. We get the chance and opportunity to carry out the first shot, kill the enemy before he can reach up to us. That's what the meteor offers to us in the sky. Similarly, on the ground plane, the scalp is a cruise missile capable of traveling up to 300 kilometers with its weapon load. It follows the terrain, evades enemy radars and other threats, and accurately hits the target, which is desired to be hit. Yeah. Uh, Air Marshal, would it be fair to say that this is the most advanced variant of the, of the Rafale presently in service? In other words, this jet is possibly more advanced than what even France operates. And that's definitely true. The fact is, we had made what we call qualitative requirements for the MMRCA program, which were very stringent. The original Rafale, which is now flown by the French Air Force, did not meet up to these requirements in totality. And therefore, it had to be enhanced with certain features, some of them being better uh, jamming equipment, better tow decoys, a helmet-mounted sighting system, a better radio altimeter, many, many such enhancements, which makes the Rafale unique, the Indian Rafale unique from what is there in France and better than even the ones which are there in Qatar as well as in Egypt. And that sir, was um, the... Yeah, and sir, um, I, and I must ask you this. It's been a difficult process for so many IF officers and you as well, as Deputy Chief, you, you led that entire Rafale negotiation. You saw it go to the courts. It was a lengthy period of time. Uh, was there ever any doubt in your mind that, that you would emerge victorious, the Air Force would emerge victorious in that lengthy battle? I took over as the Deputy Chief two or three months after the negotiations were complete and the contract had been signed. I had the opportunity to defend the Rafale. I had the opportunity to examine all the thousands of files, the millions of pages of paper, all of which I read through. And I was sure in my mind that we had done nothing wrong. The Indian Air Force had negotiated very fairly and we had got at a price, the aircraft at a price point far better than what was negotiated in the past. And therefore, in my mind, there was not any, not even a bit of a doubt that we would win the case, not only with the uh, CAG, as well as with the Supreme Court. There was no doubt in my mind at all. And it is just exactly that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, Air Marshal, um, you know, I mean, there's been so much interest in this aircraft. Uh, a lot of people saying that, look, we can deploy them in Ladakh immediately. But don't you think it's important also to temper these expectations? At the moment, we are getting only five aircraft. Yes, the pilots are trained, but eventually you need many more to, to actually want to go into combat in a meaningful way. Absolutely right, uh, Vishnu. Uh, five aircrafts are just five uh, Rafales, and I don't think they will change the whole uh, uh, way we fight. But what is very important to look at it is from the enemy's point of view. As far as he's concerned, every aircraft which intrudes into his airspace or domain would be a Rafale, as far as he's concerned. He therefore has his tactics to be re-engineered. He has to cater for the Rafale as the serious threat that it exists. We have only five, but they could be anywhere in the, and they need not be in Ladakh to be, uh, to impose upon the. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, can you hear me, Vishnu? Yes, sir, I can. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, what I was saying was the Rafale need not be based at Leh to operate over Ladakh. Its very presence in Ambala helps it dominate the entire northern Indian sky. It could operate from Ambala and fly at, in Rajasthan or even in the uh, even over Nagpur or even over Ladakh and Leh. You may recollect that during the Kargil operations, the Mirage 2000s operated from Ambala as well as from Adampur, that is uh, somewhere close to Jalandhar. And yet we flew uh, all our missions over Kargil, which is so very close to uh, uh, the eastern Ladakh. 
Right. It's just next to each other. Right. And I don't see any problem in basing the aircrafts uh, far away from the battlefield, but still uh, achieving what we want to do. Yeah. As far as the time constraints are concerned, yes, our pilots have been in France for some time now. Some of them have spent over a year and a half there, and they come well trained with experiences of having flown with the French Air Force and gaining from all their knowledge which they have uh, learnt over the years by their operations in Afghanistan, Libya, and uh, Syria, and so many other places. Now, our pilots come back with a wealth of experience, knowledge. They have to hone their skills, and they are, I'm sure, uh, will work towards making our Air Force uh, very powerful very shortly. Right. And one final question to you, sir. We are also in the midst of, and this is a larger question, in the, in the midst of promoting indigenization in a very big way. You've had an opportunity to look very closely, work very closely on the LCA program. Going forward, do you believe that Tejas has a real future in the Indian uh, Air Force in as much as, say, the Rafale does presently? I think so. The Rafale, uh, the Rafale has got a, its place. The Tejas has got its place. The Tejas is our aircraft. It's my aircraft. I was involved with the Tejas program for seven years, uh, from since 1991. I was there when this aircraft flew for the first time in, two, in the 4th of January 2001. I was the chase pilot, and if the lead pilot had fallen sick, it would have been fly, me flying the first sortie. Right. I'm particularly proud of the Rafale, and, uh, uh, as well as the Tejas, and the Tejas more so, because that aircraft represents many of what me and my team and all of us designers together decided to make and do. The, uh, you may be, uh, it may be interesting for your listeners to, uh, or your viewers to, uh, not to forget that Dassault was also involved in the light combat aircraft it during was, the yes. preliminary design phase. Yeah. And uh, the, the Rafale, the uh, Tejas, and the Mirage have a common lineage in that, fa in that, so in that, in that, because of the, all these uh, associations. Sure. Uh, the Tejas has got a great future in the Indian Air Force. The Tejas Mark 1A is an improvement over what the Tejas uh, Mark 1, which is flying today, is. Sure. And I do believe the Tejas Mark 2, or what we call the, uh, it comes by various names at the moment, but essentially the Tejas Mark 2 is the aircraft which is going to be the aircraft of choice of the Indian Air Force in future. Okay. Ten years from now, I do believe the first squadron of the Tejas Mark 2 will be in our inventory, and it will continue to grow to as many as 12 squadrons, if not more. Right. I, I hold uh, great hopes for the Tejas, sure. and I do believe the Tejas Mark II will even beat the, uh, the Rafale. Right. Well, uh, sir, thank you. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. But today, Rafale is the story. It's a huge day uh, for the Indian Air Force. Wednesday, those jets, the first five, are going to be finally here in India.